9.1b, Finding Circumference. As we discussed in the previous video, the circumference of a circle goes around the circle. The diameter goes from one edge straight across through the center to the other edge, and the radius goes from the center point to an edge of the circle. The ratio of the circumference to the diameter, circumference to the diameter, is the same for all circles. This ratio is called pi. It's this symbol, it's pi, and we can approximate it as 3.14 or 22 sevenths. We can use pi to find a formula for circumference. For any circle, the circumference divided by the diameter is equal to pi. We can rearrange this formula to equal c, the circumference, by multiplying both sides of the equation by d, the diameter. So here we have circumference divided by diameter is equal to pi. If we multiply both sides of the equation by d for diameter, we can solve it as the circumference is equal to. What we do is we multiply this side by d, and we can write d over 1 since that's written like a fraction. We get d times c over 1d. And we have the same numerator and denominator here, don't we? So that is a 1. So we have 1c is equal to pi times d, the diameter. The diameter of a circle is twice the radius. That means the diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. So d is equal to 2r. We can use the equation c is equal to pi d to find a formula for the circumference c in terms of the radius r. That means we can use the equation to find a formula that involves r. Well, since d is equal to 2r, here's the diameter going straight across. The radius is just one of them. So we would have a radius and a radius length. Since d is equal to 2r, then c, the circumference, is equal to pi 2r. This d is 2r. This diameter is 2 radii. So we write the 2 before the pi symbol, so we write it as c is equal to 2 pi r. The two formulas for circumference are c is equal to pi d and c is equal to 2 pi r. They're equivalent. These are proportional relationships. The constants of proportionality are pi and 2 pi. So remember, when we see a lonely pi, it means 1 pi. It's like an invisible 1 is there. We don't write the 1 just as we don't write the 1 with variables. So we have 1 pi and 2 pi. And pay attention to the given information in a problem. Don't confuse the diameter's length with the radius length. The diameter goes all the way across the center. The radius just goes halfway across. A circular patio with a radius of 21 feet is in the center of a garden. Find the circumference of the patio. Use the formula C is equal to 2 pi r. Use 22 sevenths for pi since 21 is a multiple of 7. When we have a multiple of 7 for our diameter or our radius, it's easier to use the fraction 22 sevenths because we can cross cancel and go quicker. So we're going to have C is approximately 2, here's our pi, here's our r, so we have 22 sevenths times 21, the radius. We substitute the given values into the formula. Now we can use cross-canceling to simplify the equation. We can cancel this off as a 1 and cancel the 21 off as a 3. That means we have 22 over 1 and 3 over 1. That means we have 2 times 22 times 3. And 22 times 3 is 66. 2 times 66 
is 132. So remember, we're not using all the digits of pi, so we're going to use an approximation symbol. We know the circumference of this patio going all the way around is 132 feet. A table has a radius of 2 meters. Find the circumference of the table. We're going to use the formula C is equal to 2 pi r. We're going to use 3.14 for pi. We have C is approximately 2 times 3.14 times 2 when we substitute the given values. We can multiply 2 times 2 to get 4 because the commutative property of multiplication says that we can multiply in any order and get the same product. So we have 4 times 3.14. We can do a little math on the side and we see it's 12 and 56 hundredths. We have to remember to write the type of units of length so it's 12 and 56 hundredths meters. And we're not using all the digits of pi, we're only using 3.14, so we have to remember that's an approximation symbol. Here we have a circle and we can see the diameter is 15 centimeters. It's telling us to find the circumference and to use the formula C is equal to pi d. So remember, the diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. So since it's giving us the diameter, we can just use this formula. We have C is approximately 3.14. Again, we're not using all the digits of pi, so we use an approximation symbol. And that's multiplied by 15, the diameter. We do a little multiplication on the side, and there's two decimal hops in the equation, so there's going to be two decimal hops in the product. We get 47 and 1 tenth centimeters. Now what is the length of the radius? Since the diameter is twice the radius, we can divide the diameter by 2. We divide and get 7 and 5 tenths centimeters. In fact, since we divide the diameter by 2 and know the radius is 7 and 5 tenths centimeters, we could use this to use the other formula. By dividing this by 2, we can use this formula because now we know the radius. The radius is only one part of this diameter. See? Now we discussed this in the last video, but I want to go over it again to make sure you remember and you understand. If we have 47.1 for our circumference, we know the actual length, and it's equal to pi times d, pi times the diameter. We use an is equal to symbol because this symbol pi represents all the digits of pi. So we can say equal to because this is using all the digits of pi. Now for here, we're using an approximation symbol because we don't know what the circumference is, and we're using 3.14, which is not using all the digits of pi, and multiplying it by the diameter. So whatever the product of these two factors are will not be the exact circumference because we're only using some of the digits of pi. So we have to say that the circumference is approximately these multiplied together. We finished 9.1b. We're going to move on to the last part of 9.1. We're going to be using circumference. I hope the rest of your day is wonderful, and I hope you join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.